Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm the curriculum manager for drama. And my name is Lee. I'm the curriculum manager for sports and dance, but I also teach on the drama course. What we're going to do today is show you how to approach a dialogue. Now, dialogue is a conversation between two people. So what we're going to do is just going to cold read through the script. Um, just read it through neutrally, just to get a sense of what's happening. I know this is all very upsetting. I'm not going. Amanda. Knowing that you've just washed your hands of the whole thing. I haven't. Delegating to George because it's all got a bit bloody messy. You can forget if you think I'm going to crawl away in a whisper and let a group of stupid, vindictive teenagers and lazy, work-shy George... Calm down. I trusted you to sort this out. I tried. I'm trying. I trusted you. I'm doing the best I can. And look where that's got us. Cool. So you can see we just read it through quite no character, quite neutrally. We were both swaying and just getting a sense of what is being said in the scene and just getting familiar with reading it over with each other. So this time round, we are going to think about a character's objective. So an objective is um, the purpose for why you are in the scene. So what does my character want to happen in this scene? So having read through the whole play, I know that she wants to get Chris to listen to her and support her in trying to get the truth out of her, some of her students who've told a lie about her. And um, Chris's objective is, Chris is um, the acting principal of the school. His objective is to get him out, her out of his office and to cover up because he's made a couple of mistakes and there's an investigation that's going on that he's kind of tampered with and it's messed things up, it's a bit sticky. So um, he's trying to get her out of the office. Yeah, so are you ready? Mm -hmm. cool. <clears throat> I know this is very upsetting. I'm not going. Amanda. Knowing that you've just washed your hands with the whole thing. I haven't. Delegating to George because it's all got a bit bloody messy. You can forget it if you think I'm going to crawl away in a whisper and let a group of stupid, vindictive teenagers and lazy, work shy George. Calm down. I trusted you to sort this out. Look, I tried. I'm trying. I trusted you. I'm doing the best I can. And look where that's got us. Listen, I never wanted this bloody job. I'm doing it because no one else will. Is that supposed to make me feel sorry for you? I couldn't give a crap about you and how you feel about your job. Go home, Amanda. Cool. So, by that time, we had a bit more characters, a bit more intention behind our voices. Now, what does that mean is we played around with the tones. Um, my intention, say, for example, in Calm Down, I know I have to cut her off. So she has to escalate and, and project her voice so then I can come in with that. One of the main things with acting believe it or not, is not acting. You're not acting. You're reacting. So my calm down is not going to be over the top and be like, calm down, Amanda, because that's acting. I'm not acting. I'm reacting to her getting louder and wanting her to calm down. So what we're going to do now, now that we're getting a bit more familiar with the text and what's happening, you can start adding in movement and you can start blocking it. So we can start making, um, what we do is we'll analyze the script and we'll start making decisions. So let's say a decision we can say is when she, um, Charlotte says this line, delegating to George because she walks away, and then my calm down would stop her from whatever. Yeah, so we can start playing around with it. Um, and also another thing you can do, what we can do is we're going to say the line super quickly. Yeah, so you start to play with it and get a sense of what's happening. Ready? Okay. Okay. I know this is all very upsetting. I'm not going. Amanda. Knowing that you've just washed your hands of the whole thing. I haven't. Delegating to George because it's all got a bit bloody messy. You can forget it if you think I'm going to crawl away in a whisper and let a group of stupid, vindictive teenagers and that work shy George. Calm down. I trusted you to sort this I out. I tried. I'm trying. I trusted you. I'm doing the best I can. And look where that's got us. Listen, I never wanted this bloody job. I'm doing it because no one else will. Is that supposed to make me feel sorry for you? I couldn't give a crap about how you feel about your job. Go on, Amanda. Cool. So as you can see, you kind of lose get into that Buster Rams mode right there and you kind of lose what's being said and the essence behind it. But it shows you that you have to start listening because when in the dialogue, I don't know what Amanda's going to say. This is the first time Chris has heard what she's saying. But I know as Lee, as an actor, what Charlotte's going to say. So it's about playing around with it and knowing that. Take your time, listen to the person and run with it from then. Cool. So now we're going to look at how the scene could be set up. So we have to think about where are they? So where is this scene happening? Um, so we know that Chris's character is a headmaster. We know that Amanda used to work in the school. So we might assume that this conversation could be happening in his office. So then we start to think about, okay, so what would be in the space? 
Um, so we're going to introduce uh, Chris sitting down and a desk. And because of my objective, uh, what I've thought that Amanda wants, which is to get him to listen, I'm going to say that my character is going to remain standing. So we start to think about dynamics within the scene, movement, um, and making it appear more realistic. Another thing when you're approaching dialogue um, or any script work is don't hold your papers like this. One, you can't see my face and the sound's getting blocked. Notice both Charlotte and I both have the papers here so we can look, glance and look. And obviously the more you read over something, it stays in your brain and helps you memorize it. So, up again. Mm -hmm. right. I know this is all very upsetting. I'm not going. Amanda. Knowing that you've just washed your hands of the whole thing. I haven't. Delegating to George because it's all got a bit bloody messy. You can forget it if you think I'm going to crawl away in a whisper and let you and a group of stupid, vindictive teenagers and lazy work. Calm I down. I trusted you to sort this out. I tried. I'm trying. I trusted you. I'm doing the best I can. And look where that's got us. Listen, I never wanted this bloody job. I'm doing it because no one else will. Is that supposed to make me feel sorry for you? I couldn't give a crap about how you feel about your job. Go home, Amanda. Cool. So it brings a different dynamic to it. And then we can start playing around, as I said, with what's happening. So you saw that I took off my glasses, I put them back on. So that was a conscious decision that I made as a character to do that. And you can see there, Charlotte started to um, pronounce and make certain words stand out more to give it emphasis like crap, to really hit that home. Um, cool, so now that that's there, I think what we should do is run through the whole scene yep. um, from beginning to end um, and go through it as if this is how we've, we've read it through, we've done this, we've written about it, we've analysed it together. Obviously, this is a longer process, but we've kind of shortened it down today for, for you. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I know this is all very upsetting. I'm not going. Amanda. Knowing that you've just washed your hands of the whole bloody thing. I haven't. Delegating to George because oh, it's all got a bit bloody messy. You can forget it if you think I'm going to crawl away in a whisper and let a group of stupid, vindictive teenagers and lazy work shy George. Calm down. I trusted you to sort this out. I tried. I'm trying. I trusted you. I'm doing the best I can. Yeah, look where that's got us. Listen, I never wanted this bloody job in the first place. I'm doing it because no one else will. Is that supposed to make me feel sorry for you? I couldn't give a crap about how you feel about your job. Go home, Amanda. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm, and I'm going to get those kids and I'm going to bring them up here and I'm going to make them tell the truth. You can't do that. What choice do I have? You have to go. Tell me, Chris, because I've run out of ideas. Tell me, what should I do? Now. What should I do? You have to go now. I will not allow this to happen to me. I will not allow it to happen. I will not allow it. If you don't leave now, going to have to call the police. Cool, so that would be the whole scene. Um, obviously, it gets, the intention was there, the, the tension went up, you could see it built. Um, and yeah, so that's how we would approach a dialogue. And then from there, we'd move on to the whole scene and explore it a bit more. All right, thank you. Cool.